All right, uh, we're on the record on case number 2317423DM Kusterman versus Kusterman. Today's date is October 18th, 2023. This is the second day of our motion hearing, um, or at least our hearing on the child related issues. Uh, Ms. Lentz, you and your client are top left to me. If you'd state your names for the record, please. Thank you, Your Honor. Elena Lentz for the plaintiff, Jennifer Klusterman. Jennifer Klusterman. And Ms. Schmelzer. Lori Schmelzer on behalf of the defendant counter plaintiff, uh, Kevin Klusterman, who's also present via Zoom in my office today. Kevin Klusterman. Thank you. And um, just procedurally speaking, we finished with direct uh, for the plaintiff, and we are going to actually start with defendant's case today. Is that correct? Um, yes, Your Honor. I think uh, we had discussed off the record yesterday um, an agreement to allow me to call my witnesses out of order. Um, well, to, to call my witnesses who are not my client out of order, just out of respect for their time and to get them moving along today. Um, and if that's still okay, I, I would ask to do that. Yeah, that's the plan. And I um, will we'll resume or at least start uh, plaintiff's cross-examination once we finish with these folks in the waiting room this morning or whenever we're done with them. Um, I so would for, like, sorry, go ahead. Probably no, go ahead. I was just going to say, who uh, your first witness, please. Dale Klusterman, please. <clears throat> okay. That's the Dale with no last name, right? Um, I'm, I'm guessing, yes. Okay, all right. Dale. I just want to make sure. Good morning. Good morning. And are you Mr. Klusterman? Yes, I'm Dale Klusterman, Kevin's father. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Oops. Just a second. I'm just typing this so we can see. Uh, sir, you've been called as a witness in this matter by Ms. Schmelzer, her client. Um, She's going to have some questions for you. And then if she chooses to, Ms. Lentz may have some questions for you. Okay. Okay. All right. If you'd raise your right hand, please. Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Ms. Schmelzer. <clears throat> Mr. Klusterman, thank you for being here today. Um, my name is Lori Schmelzer. And as you might know, I represent uh, Kevin Klusterman. And this is a hearing or a proceeding regarding. Um, Mr. Klusterman and Mrs. Klusterman's children. Um, if if you could start by stating and spelling your name for the record. Dale Klusterman, D-A-L-E-K-L-O-O-S-T-E-R-M-A-N. Um, do you know either or both uh, Jennifer Klusterman and Kevin Klusterman? Yes, I do. How do you know them? Uh, Kevin is my son and Jen is my son or my daughter-in-law. Um, how long have they been married, if you know? I believe 16 to 17 years, might be 17 this year. <clears throat> and do you know their minor children, Kelvin, Callie, and Kelsey? Yes, I do. Okay, and, and how do you know them? Uh, they're pretty an integral part of our family, so, and they're staying with us now uh, every other week. Um, they're your grandchildren, is that That's correct, correct. that's correct. Um, and... To your knowledge, presently, are Jennifer and Kevin Klusterman currently living separately? Yes. Um, if, if I could, for a moment, just direct your attention to the time before they were living separately when they lived together, um, just so that we have some context here. How often did you generally interact with either of the parents or the children, um, again, before the separation? We would see them pretty regularly, a um, couple of times a week, quite often. In the summertime, we'd see them more uh, because we'd go boating with them or something. Um, and when they had a sporting events, we'd see them at the sporting events. So um, probably in the wintertime, not quite so much. And during that time, did you have the opportunity to observe their home life or routines um, as far as child rearing and just general life during the marriage? Yes. Um, could you just briefly describe sort of when and how you were observing their home life? Um, when they, 
I, I guess when we would go over for birthday parties um, or whatever occasion it might be, stop in, um, we would see how Kevin and Jen both reacted with the kids uh, and how the kids reacted around them and the kids reacted around whoever else was there, uh, including us. Um, um, <clears throat> did you spend time in the home with the, with the Klusterman family? Yes. Um, and you mentioned going to sporting events. Was that sporting events for the children? Yes, that's correct. About how often would you go to those events? Um, in the summertime, the, the girls were, were playing softball and Calvin was playing baseball. Um, and Cheryl and I would try to, at least one of us, attend all those games. And how about in the winter? On uh, the winter, um, we've been, um, we haven't snowmobiled with them, but we have skied with them, I believe, years ago. Um, not quite so much in the, in the winter, but we did, we do have a place in Florida um, where we go down for a few weeks and sometimes the family would come down to Florida and we'd spend some time down there also. Um, and did you ever attend any of the hockey games that the children play? Yes, I did. Um, were they local or out of town? Did you travel? Both. We did travel. We traveled some. Uh, last weekend, we ended up taking uh, Cali to Midland um, on, I believe it was uh, Saturday for a game. Um, during the time that the parties were living together, again, before the separation, um, were there times that you assisted with transportation or, um, you know, childcare of any kind? Oh, absolutely. There would be times when we'd get a call, um, can you pick up one of the kids at school, bring them home, or take them to um, wherever, sporting event, pick them up from school, take them to practice um, a number of times. And were you getting those calls from um, which, which of the parents or both? Um, it would be, we would receive calls from both of them. Mm -hmm. um, and. The parties are currently separated now, is that correct? Correct. Do you know when that occurred? Um, I believe in May, around the 1st of May, might even been in the late April. Um, and, and how do you know that? Uh, because Kevin showed up on our door and said, I need a place to live. Um, Jen and I are uh, separated and of course, um, we welcomed home, welcomed him back into our house. So, and is there plenty of room in your home for um, Mr. Klusterman and, and the children? Yes, in fact, uh, CPS was here to confirm that. Um, I don't remember the date of that, but it was, I believe, in June, and they were satisfied that uh, everything was fine. Um, given the familial relationship that you testified to during the marriage. Um, had the children previous to the separation spent time at your home? Yes. Here? Yeah. They would quite uh, come over quite often in the summertime and uh, they'd go down to our beach. Uh, we have a, the subdivision owns a beach on East Bay and they'd come over and swim. And that sort of leads me to ab about how far away do you live from the marital home? Oh, uh, maybe three miles. Okay. Um, so, is it fair to say that the children are pretty familiar with your home? They're, yes, they're they are. Quite often. Yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> kind of now focusing a little bit on the time period since the separation. Um, has Mr. Klusterman, and I'm sorry, Kevin Klusterman, because I know you're also Mr. Klusterman. Um, has, has Kevin Klusterman um, exercised parenting time with the children in your home? Yes, he has. Um, and that was time without Jennifer Klusterman present. Is that fair that's, to say? That's correct. That's correct. Um, about how often would he have parenting time with the children in your home? Well, every other week uh, since the, the split, um, they've been here and he's taken care of them. So. And so, so is it fair to say you've had the opportunity to observe his interactions with the children during that period of time? Oh, ab absolutely. 
Okay. Um, and, and so can you just kind of describe like when and how, what the home life is there? Cause I know you're there, but you know, how, how's the, how are those interactions working? Well, it's, it's, it's working fine. Um, we, obviously this isn't something we planned, but, uh, it's working out well. The kids are, are fitting in and getting along really well. Uh, not only Cheryl and I, but, uh, they're really, mingling with their dad like um like normal is um in your observations is kevin klusterman an active and involved parent with the children absolutely can you give a few examples of how how he's active or involved with his children <clears throat> well he has taken them since the kids were in in school at middle east um high school or middle school rather um, he's brought the girls or, Kel or Callie or Calvin to school for since they've been in there, which is four years. Um, and so that's, that's just the start of the day. And then when it's his parenting time, he, he picks up the kids uh, from school. So at that time, you know, he, he brings them back here um, and he, he fixes, he's fixed, med he's bought in groceries, he's brought in. Uh, help fix the meals for the kids. Um, and so if they have to run to practice of some sort, whether it's uh, volleyball practice or whether it's hockey practice, um, he does that. We have, Cheryl and I have done very little of that. Um, with respect to sort of, you know, grandparents helping out with the kids, has he relied on you any more or less or the same? as your experience when the parties were residing together and, and married um, and living together? I, I would say probably just because the situation has probably been a little more, but not uh, an overabundance. If, it's usually if he has a pinch or if one child has scheduled something and the, the another child has the same time only, um, he can't be at both places at once. He'll ask if one of us can drop off one of the kids. Oh, do you have any feelings of whether or not he's sort of relegating or handing over parenting duties to you, even though you guys are living in the same home or when he's asking for help? No, absolutely not. That's, that's not Kevin. Um, have you, and again, I guess I'm kind of flip-flopping timelines here because it, it, I would assume it would be before, um, but maybe I shouldn't assume. Prior to the separation, had you had any opportunities to make observations of um, Jennifer Klusterman's interactions in parenting with the children? Yes, I have. And what kind of observations or um, did you notice about those interactions? I would say basically all in all, um, Jen is, is probably a good mother. Uh, I did witness one episode where I thought she was a little bit inappropriate, but um, all in all, I'd say she's a good parent. Um, and since the separation, have you had much interaction with um, Jennifer Klusterman? Um, probably, I, I've seen her at, at hockey games, um, and she's come up to me a few different times and asked me certain questions, and did I see this, or did I see that happen, or do I know the score of this game where the other child maybe was at, but um, that's about it. Um, had those interactions generally been positive or good? Yes. Um, has there been anything at all since the separation that, um, that you found concerning about her behavior or that you observed? I, I, I really don't think so. And everything that I had, uh, I had an issue or a question was something that happened many years, probably about four years ago. Um, but other than that, um, I haven't had any issues with her. Um, during the, the, when the time the parties were living together, were there occasions that you would be called over to the home um, while the parties were having some sort of, you know, disagreement? That happened on a on numerous occasions over the 
for over the 15, 16 years, um, where we would be called out, Cheryl, my wife and myself would be called out there um, because Jen would invite us out there because she was complaining that Kevin was being unrealistic. And so, of course, uh, we would go out there uh, sometimes really late at night and listen to both sides um, and try to calm the situation. But it usually, of, of an hour of being out there and talking through the situation, whatever the situation was, um, it was usually diffused to the, to the point where things were civil. And basically we would, we would leave that after spending the time out there. And this was basically all the time that every time that we were out there, we would get in the car and, and we would discuss what had happened, what we observed. And we found that Jen's complaint, normally whatever it was, was not something that we thought was a big deal or we didn't agree with. Uh, when Kevin explained his side of the situation, um, probably nine chances out of 10, we kind of had kind of sided with what he said. Uh, we didn't say that, but we, um, that was what the talk was between the two of us. Um, and to be clear, was it Jennifer Klusterman calling you to come to the home or, or, Kevin or both or who did that? No, it, 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 was, it was always Jen. Kevin did not want us out there because he felt that Jennifer and him could solve the issues without dragging his parents into the conversation. But Jen wanted, uh, I'm sure she wanted us to know um, what the problem was. And so she's the one that called us. And how often would that occur? Well, it was on less than a yearly event, put it that way. Um, after six months would go by, um, we would kind of joke, well, we haven't been out there lately. Um, you think things are going okay? And so that was a kind of like a talk between my wife and I. I said, well, it's about time for another call. And sure enough, uh, we'd get another call. So, and of course, we would go out there and, and listen and try to mediate everything. So... If I heard your testimony correct, approximately every six months. Well, that was, it might not have been six months, but it was every year, no doubt. Um, sometimes more than once a year? Yes. Um, during these occasions, did how were each of the parties or parents, um, what was their demeanor like when you would get there, if they were sort of Disagreeing well, something. Well, they were disagreeing with whatever the conversation was or the issue was. But Kevin was more upset. Why did you bring my parents into this? They don't need this, isn't their problem. Uh, and Jennifer thought that it was, she wanted, I guess, wanted us to know what was going on and felt that it was our problem. Um, did you ever observe either of them get violent with one another no did you no, ever observe either of them cause or or have injuries no not that i'm aware of um how about being physically aggressive either one of them physically aggressive on these occasions no never witnessed that and when jennifer klusterman would call you approximately once or more a year uh, to, to come sort of mediate marital disagreements. In all of that time, did she ever say to you or disclose to you that she felt she was being physically or emotionally abused? No, I don't believe she did. Um, if you recall, were some of these arguments regarding the conditions of the home? Yes, um, there were times when um, Kevin would get home, I think, late at night after working hard all day, um, and the house was not clean. Um, I'm, I attest to the fact that Jen's not the neatest uh, housekeeper in the world, but um, that would cause some strife, uh, especially if 
things were, the clothes were not taken care of, the clothes in the lane in the hallway instead of in the washing machine or the dryer. Uh, I've seen where um, that issue has caused uh, many arguments. And Kevin is kind of, Kevin was always a clean freak and he likes things neat. Um, and I don't think uh, that's quite the case with Jim. Um, did he participate also in your observations in keeping the home and keeping the home tidy and doing the chores? Yes, he did. In the winter, uh, when he, his main job was plowing and blowing snow. Um, and so he was home a lot of times. He worked all night, sometimes a couple days straight without sleep. Uh, but he would come home after he took a, get some sleep himself, then he would do the cleaning. Uh, and that happened most of the winter. Um, since he's been residing in your home, how does he keep his home or his space in that home? Uh, it's, it's spotless. Um, and changing gears a little bit here, what types of activities um, have you observed the family doing together um, and, and, you know, holiday sports vacations that in that type of realm? What, what vacation did you say? I said, what type of activities have you observed the family doing together while they were residing together and raising their children? And I just kind of gave a few examples of things like holidays, sports, vacations. Okay, all right. Things in that realm, what, what, are, what did you observe they do together? Um, uh, first thing that comes to mind is they used to go take their boat to Mackinac Island a lot, um, five or six times a year in the summer. And we would either, we would go up there and we would, we would golf with Kelvin and Kevin, um, or we would go eat lunch. We would just go up for the day usually. Uh, we'd bike around the island with them. Um, and the kids, the kids love Mackinac Island and they love to do the biking thing. Um, and sometimes when we would fly up there, I have access to an airplane. So we would fly up there at times and Kevin and the kids would all ride their bike up and they'd be there greeting us. So we would uh, see them there. Um, another issue, or not issue, another time, uh, like I mentioned before, we go to Florida um, for two or three times in the, in the uh, winter. And they would be down there on spring break or vacation at a different time. And we'd see them at the beach. They'd come to our pool. Um, the kids would, the kids love swimming. They go to the ocean, um, that type of thing. Um, and it was, everything was, I would say normal and, and good. And, um, you mentioned that on Mackinac Island, you would sometimes arrive on your plane or uh, the plane you have access to. And Mr. Klusterman, Mr. Sorry. Uh, Kevin Klusterman um, and the kids would greet you. Was Jennifer Klusterman with them? Um, occasionally she was, but usually it was just the kids and, and Kevin. Mm -hmm. And um, has Kevin Klusterman gone down to Florida um, without Jennifer Klusterman or was it always a family trip together? There were trips with the family, but there was also, he would take, uh, he has brought uh, Kelvin down for a week to spend time just with him. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a pretty inexpensive trip because all he had to buy was an airline ticket for him. So we had a place to stay. Um, and they would do various things. And he has also done that maybe the following year or year after that uh, with Callie. Um, the next trip is Kelsey's time. And she was too young to come down and didn't want to leave home. Um, so as she gets older, hopefully someday, uh, she'll come down and do the same experience that the other two have. But when they are down there, um, we would go to the Lion Country Safari with them. We'd go to Gumbo Limbo. We'd go to uh, take them out to, to eat. Um, we'd go down to the beach with them. Um, and they, we'd swim at the pool with them. So it was, we are with them most of the time. And so on, on some occasions, if I heard you correctly, Kevin Klusterman has gone down there without Jennifer Klusterman and at least one child. Um, and then other times it's a, it's a family event. It's both parents. 
Correct. Um, during the time that both parents are there with the children, who's taking care of the kids? Who's um, making sure they're fed and, and, and doing activities with them and supervising them? I don't know about the food, but I do know that Kevin spends a lot of time uh, as a family and taking care of the kids, do what you, you know, they they were always on the go. They, they wanted to see a lot of things, see as much as they could and do as much as possible when they were in Florida. They were only down there for a week. Um, and so that was go to the ocean, um, just enjoy the day. Um, and then the times that uh, Kevin Klusterman was there with just one child, was, was he attending to the child's needs or did he kind of, you know, disappear and let you do that? No, he did not do that. He took care of 100%. Um, there, there's, there's no doubt. We were, they were a joy to have. And it was really actually fun to have one, each individual child there because um, we could see how they reacted with, uh, with, with Kevin. And they had a riot. Uh, they, they always enjoyed themselves and asked to come back. So that hasn't happened, but uh, you know if they want to come back, they, they've totally enjoyed themselves. And during those times, did you ever observe anything at all that raised a concern about uh, Kevin Klusterman's ability to provide the day-to-day -day care for the children? Absolutely not. Um, did you witness, and, and really not just specifically these events, but overall, um, have you witnessed Kevin Klusterman and the children expressing, you know, a love and affection with one another? Yes, I have on a regular occasion. And how do they do that? They, since they've been here every other week, uh, it's really been apparent. Um, they tease each other at night when they come home and that's usually after practice or a game, um, they, they play together, they tease each other, they watch um, YouTube things and they're all laughing at that. So they just spend a, a lot of time every night they're doing, doing something or whether he sees them doing their homework, he tells them to get the homework done. And if they have an issue um, that they can't handle, he tells them to call their mother. Um, you know, and so if it, it's math is my, not my thing and neither is it Cheryl's thing. So it's not a responsibility, but um, he tells them to call Jen if they can't solve the problem and he can't solve it. Um, if you know Jennifer Klusterman, what does she do for a living? She's a teacher. Specifically, what kind of teacher, if you know? I believe a math teacher. Um. And just, do you know if she also tutors separately from that primary job? She also offers tutoring services. That's what I have heard, yes. Um, so is it primarily math that, um, you know, that the kids reach out to Jennifer during Kevin, um, Kevin's parenting time, or is it all homework? No, it is not all homework. I don't know if it's strictly, strictly math. But uh, he has helped them with uh, history, government. Um, I've helped him, could answer a couple questions. So it's, um, but if we're stumped, uh, I think Kevin suggests that being their mother's a teacher, give her a call and see what she thinks. Um, that's after he can't solve the, the answer the question and neither can we. So um, it would seem just logical to ask her. Um. And do you observe him sort of checking in with the kids and making sure that, you know, do they have homework and what needs to get done and setting aside time to do that? Yes, that's that's happens every night that they're here. When they walk in the house, that's the first question. What's your homework for tonight? Have you ever observed in general, any at any point in time, have you ever observed um, Kevin Klusterman having to discipline the children? Yes as all parents do, but yes, I have. And um, in your observations, how does he handle discipline? Kevin, um, I, I think Kevin, he, he believes that the kids need discipline. Um, I don't think he overdoes it, but I think he's firm 
And if, if they need, if they have done something that feels that they have to be disciplined, uh, he will do that, what is necessary to, to handle the problem and teach them what the issue is and what, how they should do it. Have you ever observed him to aggressively yell, scream, hit, anything like that? No. <clears throat> Have you ever observed Jennifer Klusterman's um, discipline of the children? Um, no, because I don't think she believes in discipline, but um, I, I, I basically have never seen her discipline. What's the objection? As he doesn't know what my client believes. We can strike that, um, but he did say he's never seen her discipline. So I, I think that is a factual response that he can make. Sure, he, he may have asked. I don't know. He may have asked her. We didn't follow up on whether there's foundation for it. But if you're striking it, so be it. What? what yes, I, I don't know that he can testify to what Jennifer Klusterman believes with respect to her disciplinary theory, but... I think he could testify to say that he's never seen her do it. I guess is what I'm saying. In, in I think 15, if he's asked her, and maybe he's asked her, and she's told her what she believes. So if you don't want to follow up, it's your witness. Thank you. Um, and I'm sorry, sir. I had an omitted question. Um, when Kevin Klusterman disciplines the children, how have you observed they respond? As all kids, um, they don't like it, but I think they, when it's, they do what they, what they're told to do. They're, they're really good kids. Um, and nobody likes to be disciplined, but they, they do it. Um, I, I want to turn your attention to um, an incident that occurred um, that Mrs. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I want to say Mrs. or Mr. Klusterman, and I know that's also you and your wife, so I'm trying to um, make sure I clarify that I'm talking about Jennifer and Kevin Klusterman. Um, Jennifer Klusterman has alleged in pleadings an incident where you um, arrived at the marital home um, somewhere around the weekend before the 4th of July of 2023 by yourself. Did do you recall that? You yes, I do. Um, why did you go there? The morning, I'll, I'll start with the morning before that. Um, that Sunday morning at a little after nine o'clock, Kevin, Kevin was served a PPO by the uh, Grand Traverse County Sheriff. And so that started the day. Um, and in that police officer that showed up told Kevin. Your objection, Your Honor. Hearsay. He can't testify to what the police officer told him. I was standing there as a witness. Sir, you can't testify to what somebody who's not in court today that's subject to cross-examination or clarification of what that other person said or didn't say. Um, so we can't talk about what the police officer said. Um, but if you could describe sort of, you know, what else was going on that morning? Well, nothing until um, late morning, might have been around noon or whatever. Our family, every um, summer, 4th of July weekend, we would spend at uh, Mike and Barb Age's place. They're my brother and sister-in-law. And they would have a big party for three, four days, uh, come and swim. Kids would use the, the boat, they'd use uh, the paddle boards, they'd do everything. Um, that was to happen that Sunday. Well, when Kevin was served the PPO, um, he felt that he could not bring the kids, invite the kids over and be in that situation with the kids. So at the same time, Kelvin was texting me and calling us saying, why I can't, can't I? Your Honor, you can't say what Kelvin said, but he was calling and texting you. Yeah. All right. 
Um, so anyway, they, were, they weren't allowed to come over. And Kevin would not allow them to come over because he didn't want to be put in that position, not knowing what really was going on after that PPO. And I stopped in and saw Jen. I was just driving by and I was driving by on my way over there because um, there was a car there that we were, that I was told uh, was causing a little bit of difficulties. And I wanted to know what really stirred this thing up. So anyway, but I stopped there and Jennifer and Callie or Kelsey and Randy Burgess were standing outside. Um, I walked up to Jen and I said, Jen, I don't really know what's going on, but you have caused this. And Kevin needs to, Kevin is not doing anything until he talks to his attorney because it was a little confusing episode here. So I, that's exactly what I said. And I said, you better keep them here instead of bringing them over, letting them go to Mike and Barb's until, we, until he can figure out what really his obligation is or responsibility. And that's what basically, and then I turned around and left. Um, sir, did you feel that you were acting aggressively towards uh, Jennifer Kusterman on that occasion? No, I, I raised my voice a little more than normal, but um, I, I didn't feel like I was overly angry or expressive. Did you um, berate her or physically um, show aggression in any way? No, not at all. Um, did you I, I, face, I, point your finger at her? I, I think I, I think I pointed my finger and okay. said, "You caused this. Um, you keep the kids at home." And I, I find it, you know, kind of ironic that she says that she was scared of me and berated. I wish, you know, for the 15 years prior to that, she always invited me out to solve their their problems. Uh, but that particular day, I guess it wasn't uh, the thing to do. Um, did. Kevin Klusterman direct you to go over there? No, he didn't. He was actually uh, upset that I went over there. He said, why did you go over there? And I told him, trying to diffuse the angry kid situation. Did you tell him, or did, did you tell him before you went over there? No. That you were going? No. Um, so in any way, were you communicating any sort of messages for Kevin Klusterman at that point in time? No, not whatsoever. The only message I said was he needs to talk to his attorney. Um, and was that your personal feeling or belief at that point? Yes. Yes. Um, at that time, was there a lot of confusion about how that PPO affected parenting time? It certainly was because uh, we were getting mixed signals and didn't, and that made confusion on top of confusion. And again, uh, you were present when Kevin Kusterman was served, right? Correct. And when was that? July 2 at about 9.05 in the morning. Um, was that a Saturday in 2023? No, I think it was a Sunday morning. A Sunday morning. Okay. And, um, if, if, if we're okay, so if, if July 2nd was a Sunday morning, um, would July 4th have been Tuesday, the, the holiday, the 4th of July? Yes. Okay. Um, I don't have a calendar in front of me, but that I think that's what it is. I mean, Sunday the 2nd, Monday the 3rd, yeah, Tuesday yeah. the 4th. Okay. Um, uh, and at that point in time, were businesses closed or courts or you know. Because of the holiday Every, and the weekend? Every, everything was closed. There was very little communication done. Um, and so at that point, um, Kevin said, well, I can't say that probably. Um, you, you I, knew that Kevin, I knew that he was not able to get a hold of you 
until that Monday or till the following Wednesday uh, after the holidays. Did things clear up considerably right away um, in your observations on Wednesday the 5th? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> that is because you had evidently told him about what wizard is. And so that was the first he knew about wizard. Nobody even told him anything about that until that day. Um, in your observations, uh, has Mr. Kevin Klusterman provided stability and consistency for his children? Yes, he sure has. How has he done that? Um, number one, financially. Um, he is probably, if they need some money for some extra things or whatever, the, the kids always come to him and say, Dad, you got a few extra bucks, I want to go do this or I want to go do that. Uh, we've At least that's what we've seen um, since they've been here. And, and he gives them, sees what, the, the, what they're asking for. And either if he says no, it's, and then he'll tell them what the reason is. But basically, um, he tells them, you know, don't waste your money. I will give you money for this, but don't do whatever. Waste it. Other than financially, yeah. what else does he do with respect to just overall providing for the children? Stability well, I, th I think, he, I think he's, number one, he shows them his love towards them. Uh, he's always telling them that he loves his kids. He tells each and every one of that. I, I hear it every day when, when they're over here. Um, he, he hugs them. He tells them that he loves them. Uh, when he, they leave here, I am sure he misses them dearly for that following week. Um, does he adhere to routines? I mean, now that they're, I, I guess, now that they're in school, it's probably a little more important, but... Does he, does he have, you know, morning routines, bedtime routines, things like that, that you see? Yes. Um, in, in the morning, I'm not here. I, I usually go to work uh, before they leave, but he'll, he'll take Callie to school. I think he leaves at seven o'clock. I'm not sure. Um, that happens every day um, that he has them. And he, he's on top of the situation, just uh, like a normal parent is concerned Get, the kids need to be such and such a place, they are. And how about evening um, or after school routines? What do you observe there? Um, he'll help with dinner. He'll bring in groceries. Um, he'll ask the, the children what they have for the homework, um, whether they have it or not. Uh, sees that they started if they do. If not, they can go do something different. Um, but he's He's asking them the, the right questions. Have you observed whether or not Kevin Klusterman supports a close and continuing um, relationship with the children and Jennifer Klusterman? I do not know about Jennifer. Um, I do know that he'll do anything for his children. He loves his kids dearly. Uh, but maybe, my maybe I should say it a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Have you observed um, Kevin supporting the relationship that the children have with Jennifer Klusterman? Yes. Yeah, um, I, I, he, he will tell the kids, um, your mother is still your mother. Uh, irregardless of what we go through, she loves you just as much as I love you. I've heard that a number of times. Um, does he um, facilitate or allow them to call and text freely um, while they're there with, with Jennifer Kusterman? Absolutely. He never interferes with that? Never. Um, does he say unkind words about Jennifer Kusterman in the children's presence? No, not, not at all. I've never heard it. Um, No further questions. Thank you. Ms. Lentz, do you have any questions for this witness? I do, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Klusterman, um, you testified that 
Ms. Klusman would call you for help about once a year, so approximately 16 to 17 times. Isn't it true that it's more closer to five times in the course of their marriage? I would say no, that's incorrect. And Mr. Klusterman, um, in October of 2021, did Ms. Klusterman reach out to you via text message for help in the way that your son, Kevin, speaks to Calvin? I don't recall that. Mr. Klusterman, you said nine out of 10 times you support um, Kevin in his interactions with Jen. Did you support him in 2019 when he hit Mrs. Klusterman in the face? Um, no. And isn't it true that you asked Ms. Klusterman if she was sure she wanted to take Kevin back? I don't recall that either. Ms. Klusterman, do you think that children behave differently in front of their parents than when they're not in front of their parents? Objections, Mr. Yes. Your Honor, I... Just in general? I mean, you're just asking a general question. I'm just asking I mean, a general I mean, question. Not over, these... Overruled. All right, Mr. Klusman, I'm going to go ahead and ask the question again. Do you think, in general, children can act differently in front of their parents as to when they're not in front of their parents? Yes, I believe that's possible. So do you think it's possible your son acts differently in front of you as to when he's not with you? I, I assume anything's possible. And Mr. Klusterman, isn't it true that your wife, Cheryl, actually does most of the child rearing that's going on right now when the children are at your home? That is not true at all. Did Cheryl bring Calvin his jersey last night because Kevin couldn't do it? Um, yes, because uh, Kevin was not home. And in fact, he oh, called... Okay. I didn't ask you to follow up. All right. Um, and isn't it true that Cheryl cooks most of the meals? No. Ms. Klusterman, isn't it, or Mr. Klusterman, isn't it true that you attend your grandchildren's sporting events more frequently than your son? No, that's not true. Mr. Klusterman, we talked about a July 2nd incident where you came over to the marital residence. Um, isn't it true that from that altercation, um, or let me back up. Isn't it true that the minor child, Kelsey, was present when you confronted the defense, Ms. Klusterman? Could you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I jumbled it, I know. Um, Mr. Klusterman, isn't it true that Kelsey, the minor child, was present when you confronted Ms. Klusterman on July 2nd, 2023? I believe I said that, yes. Isn't it true Kelsey was crying as a result of this confrontation? Not when I was there, she wasn't. Mr. Klusterman, you testified that your son, Kevin, sometimes would be upset that he would retur return from work and the house was unclean. Um, isn't it true that Ms. Klusterman also works all day? I believe so, yes. So why would that responsibility fall primarily on her? Uh, usually she would be home before he would, but I, I don't know. I never, I, it wasn't my issue. Um, I don't know the cause of it. And Mr. Klusterman, you testify that during the winter, your son works all night. Um, are you and Cheryl going to be taking care of the kids in the winter when he's working all night? I don't believe so. I think he's even considering a career change to, um, uh, to he's, been, he's had a job offer from somebody else. And whether he takes it or not, that's up to him. So I, I don't think that's going to happen. Mr. Klusterman, have you ever told your son that you're not attending your grandchildren's games because they didn't try hard enough? I think I said that one time um, to him. It was, uh, I think, regarding their son, Kelvin. I don't remember if it was a hockey game or what it was, but I think I, I said um, something similar to that, yes. Do you think those comments are uh, helpful to a child's confidence level? 
Probably not. Mr. Klusterman, isn't it true that when the children return to Ms. Klusterman's at the end of your son's parenting time week, that they return with bags full of dirty laundry? I have no idea about that. I can't answer that question. I don't check their laundry. I do know our, our washing machine and dryer are going all week long, so I do know that. So what it is, I don't know. I have no further questions, Your Honor. Do you have any redirect, Ms. Schmelzer? Um, yes, uh, briefly. Uh, sir, you were asked about um, your wife bringing a jersey to the party's child, Kelvin, yesterday. Um, do you do you know that that happened? Yes, I think Kelvin ended up calling uh, directly to Cheryl. I don't even know if Kelvin was notified of that. Um, but he called Cheryl and said, is my jersey there? And she said, yes. Well, he's told her that he needed it. And she said, I'll be there in, in two minutes. Do you know approximately so, what time that happened? Um, 8.15, maybe 8 o'clock, something around that time. And the children are not with Mr. Klusterman this week or Kevin Klusterman. I that is correct. Okay. Um, do you know what day they do exchanges? On Sunday uh, at six o'clock. And yesterday, is it fair to say, was a Tuesday, correct? Correct. Um, during the winter, you, you testified that your son works all night and you were, you were asked um, a clarifying question. What does he do for work in the winter? He plows snow. And... So whether, or, is it fair to say whether or not he's actually working is related to whether or not snow needs to be plowed? Yeah, a lot of times when there's no snow, you, you don't work. So there are, there are many days where you don't work. And if we have a storm coming in, uh, I've seen him work uh, around the clock until his customers are taken care of. But yes, that's totally based on snowfall. So it's not every night in the winter that he works all night, correct? Absolutely correct. not, no. Um, does he need to work to financially support his family? Yes. I, I'm assuming so. Um, I mean, most people do, right? Sure. Sure. Um, have you noticed any sort of changes in his work behavior as it relates to when he has the kids for the week versus when he doesn't? Yes. Uh, the week prior to him having the kids when he does not have the kids he puts in some very long days so that he can the following week not work quite so much so he can do kid things uh, and that was pretty evident here before school started because they did they went boating which was uh, with a tube and water skiing the week that he had them uh, or that the time his parenting time um, they do that two or three nights in a week. And, but that's why he worked the previous week uh, till dark every day. So he could have that freedom to do that. And he works for himself, is that correct? He's self-employed? That's correct. As of right now? Yes, correct. Um, okay, I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. Any final questions, Ms. Lentz? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You're all set. Thank you, sir. I, I'm happy to go over the uh, waiting room list again, if you'd like. Um, I'm I'm gonna hope that everyone's still there. So the, the, I'll try Emily Hale, please, which I think you might be Drew Hale on the sure. screen. And I, I'll rename that if, if that's correct. Good morning. Morning. Um, my name is Matt Hagen. I'm the referee in this matter. Would you mind identifying yourself for me, please? My name is Emily Hale. <clears throat> and um, you've been called as a witness in this matter by Ms. Schmelzer and her client. She's going to have some questions for you. And then if okay. she chooses to, Ms. Lentz may have some questions for you, okay? Sure. One second. If you'd raise your right hand, please. 
Do you swear from the testimony you're about to give the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you, Ms. Schmelzer. Thank you. Ms. Hale, um, my name is Lori Schmelzer, and I represent Kevin Klusterman, who has asked you to um, appear and testify today. As you might know, we are here for um, uh, some child-related matters regarding the Klusterman family, and I have some questions for you today, and I do appreciate you taking your time out of your day to um, help inform the court of the things that you know um, and answer my questions. Um, if we could start by having you state and spell your name for the record. Yep, Emily Hale, E-M-I-L-Y-H-A-L-E. -E. And do you know either or both Jennifer Klusterman and Kevin Klusterman? I do. How do you know them? Um, my husband and I moved here in 2008 and were introduced to them um, by another couple that we all went to church with. We were put in a small group together. And so they were literally the first friends we made when we moved here. Um, and do you also know their minor children, Kelvin, Kelly, and Kelsey? I've known Kelvin since he was about 18 months old. And then the other two obviously came along after that. Um. To your knowledge, are Jennifer and Kevin Klusterman currently living separately? They are. If I could maybe just direct your attention towards the time before their separation, um, just so that we have some context and understanding of the timeline here. Um, when they did live together as a family, how often were you generally interacting with the parties and the children? Um, I mean, when the kids were younger, every weekend, if not a couple of times a week, um, as the kids got older and their sports schedules, mine as well as theirs, um, maybe a couple of times a month. Um, do you do you also have children about the same ages as the Klusterman children? Um, um, my boys are, my oldest is 11, and then we have 10-year-old boys um, that are twins. Um. Did you, in that time period, did you have the opportunity to observe the, the Klusterman family, like home life, routines, things that they did? Yeah, very often. Um, what type of activities did you see them do as a family? Uh, boating, <laughs> um, anything outdoor, anything sports related. Um, I mean, we, they were the first one in our friend group to have kids. So they were kind of the couple that as we all started having kids, we kind of looked to them as the only ones that knew what they were doing <laughs> because the rest of us had kids probably four years after they started. Um, and some of these activities, the boating or the outdoor activities that you were observing, was it both of the parents together with the children or just one? Or it was all, almost always both of them. Um, and so with that, did you have the opportunity to observe both of their parenting, um, parenting styles, parenting of, in general, of the children during yes, that marriage? I did. And, uh, you know, if you could give some examples of when and how. Um, they were the first ones to ever, my husband grew up in El Paso, Texas in the desert. They were the first ones to ever take us on a boat. That would have been when Kelvin was a baby before Callie and Kelsey were born. Um, we would go, when we first met, um, Jen was a teacher at Trevor City Christian and would have to go to football games. So Kevin would often reach out to see if we wanted to go with them to the games, um, even as a baby, Kelvin would get very excited about sporting events. And so there were a lot of times that we would go with them to take, you know, to do stuff with him. Um, and then as the kids got older, it was more boating days with all the kids. They were the, Kevin was the first one to take my boys on a boat. He was the first one to let Hunter drive a boat. Um, and a, a lot of times, because when your kids are that young, it was just a lot of times at each other's houses with all of the kids. And did you observe either or both parents actually parenting their children, um, showing love, affection, discipline, oh, yeah. that type of stuff? Yes. Which one of the parents was primarily doing that? It was both. Um, how did you, I guess, how have you seen the children interact with, let's start with Kevin Klusterman. Um, as far as showing love and affection and, and that type of stuff, how, how did they do that? 
uh, Kevin loves his kids so much. He's always been a very hands-on dad. Um, I cannot even tell you how much he loves those kids, how much he shows up for those kids, how much he, I'm sorry, I'm going to get emotional. Kevin is a great dad and he has always been a great dad. Jen is a great mom. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, it was never an unequal partnership when it came to parenting. I mean, it's, my kids will tell you that Kevin is the, when all the grownups are hanging out and all the grownups are talking and doing their thing and the kids are playing, if any parent is more likely to go in there and start playing with the kids and interacting with them, it is Kevin more than, more than I am. I love my kids, <laughs> but when I have grown up time, I am more likely to focus on catching up with my girlfriends. And it was not uncommon to go into the next room and see Kevin laying on the floor, especially when Kelvin was a toddler, helping him line up all his farm animals and his tractors and teaching him the names of all the tractors and answering the 5,000 questions that a small child has about stuff that really doesn't matter. But he has always taken the time, not just to play with those kids, but to engage in conversations with them and to answer their questions and to be there for them and to show up for their sporting stuff. And I mean, it's been a long running joke for the last 10 years between the couples that we've been friends with that if we want to see the Klustermans, we're going to show up at a sporting event or we're going to stop by after a sporting event. Um... And Kevin has never once complained about that. It has always been, I mean, I have text messages where I'll say, I'm so sorry we didn't get to see you tonight. And he'll say, oh, I was in the UP with Callie, but I wouldn't have it any other way. I love watching those kids do what they love. And how about uh, Mrs. Klusterman? Can you describe a little, little bit about how she interacts with the kids and her parenting? And Jen, Jen is a great mom. She loves her kids. Um, I think that something has shifted with her in the last year that has made it very hard for me to see the Jen that I knew for a long time. Um, prior, I guess, prior to the last year then would you say that you were better friends with Kevin or Jennifer or both of them? Um, prior to the last year, I would say I was closer with Jen just because we spent more time together. We used to do me and her and our friends, Gracie and Christy for a long time, had a standing Tuesday night dinner um, once a month where we would, I've never, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time alone with Kevin. I mean, he had a wife, I have a husband. Um, so it was typically when I was with Kevin, it was with my husband, Drew, or Jen, or Joe and Gracie Burgess there. Um, so I, I mean, the closeness, I think, um, in prior to the last year, yeah, I would say I was closer to Jen because I spent more time with her. And, and in that time frame, you know, did you observe her being active and involved with the kids, showing love and affection back and yes. forth? Yes, absolutely. Do you have any examples of that? Of Jen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, the same as with Kevin, like she, especially when the kids were little, um, they, you know, holding them, snuggling them, um, we used to joke all the time that like when we were all together and it was late and the kids needed to go to bed, Jen typically on those nights would be the one to go lay down with them and it was well we'll, we'll see Jen in the morning because we knew that she would fall asleep with the kids um but Kevin did that too like there were a lot of nights where the kids would be put to bed and then Cal Cal Calvin especially would come out and want Kevin and Kevin never hesitated to be like okay I gotta go lay down with Kelvin and make sure that he's settled and then if you guys are still here when I come out cool if not I'll see you tomorrow have you ever observed either of the parents have to discipline their children? Yeah. How, let's talk about Kevin Klusterman first. How have you observed he disciplined the children if they needed to be disciplined? Typically just talking to them. I mean, he has always been really good about like getting down on their level and having those conversations with them when they're doing something that needs to be corrected. And how about um, Mrs. Klusterman? How how have you observed her discipline the children? Uh, probably the same. I mean, I 
there was a lot of, in my experience and the things that I observed, and maybe it was because we were all together and maybe it was differently when it was just the two of them, there was a lot when the kids were younger of Jen just looking at Kevin and saying, I need you to do something. I need you to take care of this. Was there ever any yelling, screaming, physical aggression, anything like that that you ever observed? I would not say any screaming or physical aggression. I think sometimes there's yelling because when we're all together, there's eight kids between the three couples. And so it was not uncommon for raised voices, but not in anger or with a negative emotion, literally just there are eight children running around this living room. And so if voices were raised, it was just trying to get the kids' attention to correct or move on or to just get them to settle so that we could do whatever it is we were going to do, but nothing inappropriate, nothing that raised any red flags. I mean, I've been a foster care advocate for 10 years. I work in the mental health field. Um, so I know the signs of when something is inappropriate with a child and when it's not. And I've never witnessed that from either of them. And so would that say, have there ever, ever been a time that you were concerned um, or you had a concern was raised in your mind regarding either parent's ability to care for the children and, and ensure their well-being? No, I would, I would let either of them take my children anywhere they wanted to go for however long they wanted to be with them because I trust them both completely. Oh, do you have any concerns at all about the safety or well-being of the children in Kevin Klusterman's care? No. Um, in your observations, you know, um, I guess, has has Mr. Kluser been an involved and present father, like, all throughout the children's lives? Yes. Um, do you think he provides stability and consistency for those children? I do. Not How just him, but his entire extended family. How so? Do you have a few examples? Um, I mean, just the things he does with them, the things that he does to support them. I've known his entire family for 10 plus years. And he, it's not just that Kevin is a great dad, it's that his family is so encouraging and supportive. And I know that things get sticky when couples split. I know that when you are solo parenting without your partner, there are other things that come into play that maybe didn't exist when you were living in a two-parent household. Kevin could handle that even if he didn't have the extensive family that he has, but he also has so many people in his life that love the kids and are willing to help support with things that, I mean, he, he owns a business. He works full-time. There are going to be times that he can't get somebody to practice or he can't be there, but then his mom will, his dad will, his sisters will. Um, and to me, I just, that's just part of having a big family. Like that's, that's normal. And I think I, I think I'm hyper aware of that because my family is in Indiana and my husband's family is in Texas. So when you're not a, aware of how much you rely on family to help you parent, um, what Kevin, Kevin will put those kids first and be there every chance he gets. But if for some reason he could not, it's a phone call away to have somebody else that he loves, that he knows loves those kids that can show up in his place if that were necessary. And in your earlier testimony, did I understand correctly that you kind of said at least, you know, prior to the last year, you felt you were fairly close friends with Jennifer Klusterman? Yeah. Um, and, and was your testimony that you, you saw her at least weekly, the Tuesday dinners? <laughs> Um, uh, those Tuesday dinners were monthly, but yes, oh, it was not uncommon for us to see each other once a week. Um, did you talk on the phone, text message each other? We did. And for a long time before they moved and we moved, we were we lived within walking distance of one another. At any time, did Jennifer Klusterman ever express to you that she was fearful or felt threatened by Kevin Klusterman? She never expressed that to me. Um, that I can recall. I mean, obviously, like, they've had their issues, um, but I never got the impression that she was afraid of him. Um, 
either seeing her mannerisms or, or her just telling you neither one no um mm-hmm. did she ever tell you she felt she was the victim of abuse of any kind emotional or physical um after they had the issue that they had a couple of years ago, I found she had never expressed that to me before then. When I found out about that, she explained to me her side of things, um, which she later admitted were not completely truthful. Um, So, I, I mean, I personally don't know what to think about that situation because the story has been inconsistent over the last couple of years. Um, did she actually say to you, she had not been truthful about that situation? That was her statement to you? It was. Um, I have no further questions. Ms. Lentz, any questions for this witness? Just briefly, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Hale, uh, you're here obviously testifying on Kevin's behalf today. Isn't it true that on Thursday, June 15th, 2023, you texted Ms. Klusterman, you've always been strong for everyone but yourself. It's okay to put yourself first. It's necessary. That is correct. So, Ms. Hale, did you support this Jennifer's decision to leave this marriage? I did. And would that be because of things that Miss Klusterman told you were not going right in the marriage? That from what they have both shared that, but yes. And Miss Hale, um, isn't it true the last time you've seen the family is in December of 2022? No. Miss Hale, isn't it true that you really have only seen the family about five to six times per year in recent history? No. And Miss Hale, do you think people act differently in front of their friends than they do when they're behind closed doors? Um, sometimes I didn't feel that way about the Klustermans or the Burgesses. But it would be possible. Oh, absolutely. No further questions, Your Honor. Any redirect, Ms. Schmelzer? Um, just briefly, ma'am, um, With respect to that text in June, um, is there a difference between sort of marital partners um, no longer being a fit for each other and and how they parent their children? Is is there a difference between that when you were kind of making that comment? Absolutely. And can I can I say more about that text? Please do. That text was either the day before or the day after I sat at you and I lounge with Jen asking her if she was actually going to file and she broke down and started sobbing and told me that she was going to file not because she wanted a divorce but because she was hoping that it would wake Kevin up and make him realize that he wanted to fight for their marriage and then she started crying harder and shared with me that her biggest hindrance to filing was because Kevin is such an amazing dad and she knew what it would do to those kids if they didn't have him in their house. All of her tears were not about losing her marriage. Those tears and her words to me were, I do not want to stay married to him right now. I want to grow old with him. And I am hoping that if I file, it will shock him enough that he will go to counseling with me. We can work on our marriage and my kids will grow up with their dad and their mom in their home together. And I said, I hope that that can happen for you guys. And she said at least three times, Kevin is such an amazing dad. I do not want to do this to the kids. Thank you. I have no further questions. Uh, Final questions, Ms. Lent. No, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're all set. Thank you.